Hi, this is the weekly recap. Today is Monday the 16th of December. It is just after 8 a.m. UK, so I'm working on live data, pre-market data as provided by market makers. Uh, this is something that we don't always get with other brokers, but at least with uh, interactive brokers, you can get a fairly good picture um, as early as 8 a.m. UK. So I am starting with the January regular trade and as you can see it is a very safe conservative trade. Some would say it is too conservative, not enough aggressive, but it is not an RTT which to me is a little bit too lenient on the upside and sometimes a little bit risky on the downside. Of course by placing your combo deeper out of the money you, can, you may think that uh, over time position will recover but if you are in the view of becoming a quasi-professional trader you don't want to have a, a large drawdown so even if the trade has evolved quite a lot in the last three to four years I started mentoring on the Rhino in 2016 and I've traded it for quite a while I would say that the Rhino is meant to become a kind of a generic broccoli butterfly uh, strategy and by using additional layers like I've been doing for the last year or so we can mitigate the upside risk and as you can see compared to uh, 2017 or even 2018 and uh, this trade is now doing okay in all market configurations so we should not forget that there, there are always trade-offs when you apply an adjustment you're just moving risk around to some area you think less likely to, to occur but let's always keep in mind that there was, there's always some risk attached to any strategy without further ado let's have a look at the January regular trade so this is the trade log uh, we haven't done much I mean last week I just applied a short put condor just to reduce the upside risk a little I think the upside risk is now in the region of $200 so this is next to nothing of course theta is minimal and we could be a little bit more aggressive and also after 35 DTE the trade is getting into its descent phase we know more or less that it will or will not hit a profit target and we can now choose to scale out reduce exposure and maybe get some profit out of this trade. The, the Rhino trade is not meant to provide a good profit on the upside but you know as I said by allowing the trade to evolve this trade has become uh, quite easy going on the upside no stress and if you can make a bit of money there that's cool. That being said we must also keep in, into very very important consideration that the Rhino if it is to become a generic Broccoli butterfly trade, it is still very much compliant to its overall uh, philosophy, which is a delta neutral flat T plus zero over the largest possible range. If you can trade according to that very broad philosophy, it can be the Rhino, it can be any other trade, but it's it's basically one approach to actually reach that objective. So now what can we do after applying that short put condor? We can actually do the same. I would refrain from adding more capital into the trade when volatility is low because we would add uh, an unreasonable risk now if the, if the market would suddenly drop. Now we have a good cover of a, a large range. The vague exposure is minimal so we would probably get nothing no impact whatsoever if the market would drop even 100 points so now it's a matter of tweaking the trade simplifying it because we have maybe a bit too many strikes so we can definitely try and get some premium where there's still some volatility so maybe by applying short put condors here and by the, at the same time reducing the number of strikes by two and there we could actually now be quite quite comfortable because we would at least break even um, if we would just leave the trade um, on over the, over the festive season. I would think that I, I will probably 
close the trade by December 31st, but you know it, it won't reach a profit target by end of the month. So, and if I was just to stick to the general profit target rule, I would then have to close it early Jan. So uh, we won't get that much theta out of the trade anyway. So it's a matter of just maybe you know, to get in, get about one dollar there, maybe two, yeah, one dollar and then be happy with eliminating the upside risk altogether without adding exposure to the trade. So that's the general philosophy of this trade and a conservative management for it. So this is the regular trade. The B2B trade does not have the same flexibility in terms of adjustments. It is a, a trade that we trade by stricter rules and uh, we can only apply some trade reduction by maybe putting on a short put condor here which is basically a reverse Harvey on the upper longs just to reduce the trade exposure without using any additional layer so that would be similar I not much in favor of going Delta positive this is not an RTG type of trade or X4 or this is a, a, a Rhino uh, that being said maybe if I don't apply this one this week maybe next week and for the same reason I may not actually keep it all the way to early Jan although I should stick to the rule and look at profit target every week for the next two to three weeks so if I am very strict on that I will just uh, let the trade uh, progress through time but there's so little theta into this trade um, I may just also close it by the end of the month so easy going, no major adjustments or no adjustment at all in the next couple of weeks. And as you have seen, we have entered February on a very good vol pop. And that's sometimes quite important to be opportunistic when we have a sudden pullback, volatility shooting uh, with VIX around 15 or, or so. Uh, as you can see, we have done nothing to this trade just added a small layer last week, a reduced size broken butterfly on the upside. That kind of narrow combo is definitely a solution to low IV. It can still bring a profit or cost nothing, especially this early in the trade. And it does cover a bit more ground on the upside. So we do add some theta here. This trade is not yet very much sensitive to the downside. I would say for the next two weeks this trade will do okay and be quite resilient on the on the downside probably 400 points or more so if we even if we have a pullback to one of those strong support levels around here i invite you to watch the other spx outlook video i would say that maybe we wouldn't get 1100 dollars profit but it should still be probably seven eight hundred dollars in if the market would I mean, if SPX would go back into the tent, I would I would reckon that this trade is still resilient enough to sustain a, a fall of 100 points. Of course, we don't predict Vega, we don't predict volatility, we don't predict how VIX would um, then um, uh, react to a fall. The the, the 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 acceleration of the fall would definitely have an impact on the T plus zero. But I would say that at this point, this trade would be quite resilient and at least it would do that it will be would be it would behave okay for at least two to three weeks depending on its cruising altitude by then we will probably have some intuition how, how well it will fare until it's closed um, but I would say this trade is going to be doing okay at least if the market keeps wishing there's no upside risk whatsoever um, is this uh, a, a good incentive to just take profits on, the, on an early profit target and reposition I don't think it is necessary. The trade is well positioned and we would probably not have a good entry point on, um, right now. If I was to price a, I would say around 31.75, price of broken butterfly here, it would probably cost about $4 or more. Yeah, about $4. Uh, which is still okay. I mean, it's but I don't think it is a very good price. I, again, in, in, in my previous um, morning notes and previous videos, I said, well, 
fortunately this is not back into 2016 2017 with the vol crash where if you remember we used to pay sometimes eight nine dollars for for a broken butterfly and low iv so this is not as bad but this is not either a reason to go too aggressive i think the market can still surprise us with a sudden fall and we should still keep our trade uh, man managed very conservatively maybe quick look on the btb trade btb trade is doing almost just as well of course it is now with a tiny bit of more of negative delta doesn't have the same cover the thing is that because it can't use additional layers um, we have to hope for the trade to get closer to the tent otherwise we will have to start peeling it off reducing it and basically turn, turning it into a more RTT style at this point thanks to the good entry there's nothing to do on this trade if you are very bullish and you want to uh, start imitation into RTT now it is also possible but that would depend on your uh, market bias or conviction I would say that this trade is in, in good shape and we should if the market now bumps on this strong resistance up to 3200 it could then build a bit of negative delta it, it, it would take a lot of time to reach a, a delta alert level and that's also a possible weakness in the, in terms of the what we could call the decision tree for the rhino is that sometimes one may want to um, add a hedge on the upside which is in a way another possible uh, layer pre to prevent from the market from um, uh, for, 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 to prevent the combo the rhino t from sinking when the market keeps grinding away or runs away like crazy like we've seen in the past but um, again this is not really necessary at this point okay this is a short video where I digressed a little bit about the general philosophy of the trade I think it's important sometimes to get back to the, to the basics of a strategy um, there's not much to say um, I could go and and show you the baby run on the Russell. The, the the baby runner didn't fare too well because it was um, affected by the sudden, sudden runaway Russell and I closed it by just peeling it off as I usually do uh, so it, I didn't really adjust it I just reduced risk until I closed it and um, I think on Thursday I could have made 2% in India and I just closed that break even Okay, if you want any uh, advice or recommendation or you have any question on the baby rhino, easiest is to contact me on Slack and I will answer all your questions. Okay, I'll see you a bit later on Slack. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.